Here at the Toulouse Space Show, we are with Mr. Enrico Saggese, who is the president of ASI, which is the Italian Space Agency. Thank you very much, Mr. Saggese, for speaking to us. What do you expect from the Toulouse Space Show, and why is ASI present in such great numbers? Oh, this year is uh, quite an important year. Uh, in uh, 2012, uh, by the end of November, we have the ministerial in ESA. So we need to have uh, a complete cooperation among all countries in Europe in order to discharge uh, this task. The task is uh, the one of defining the future for ESA in many fields like launchers, like exploration, like International Space Station and uh, human uh, space flight. So I think it is uh, quite important uh, to stay in the occasion uh, we can exchange views. And uh, this is the occasion to exchange views. What is the significance of the attendance of the president of the Lazio region, uh, Renata Polverini, who together with yourself was the special guest of the exhibition, and in the context of promoting Italy in the aerospace segment? Well, uh, we understood that uh, Toulouse, mid the Pyrenees, Toulouse region, uh, is the region in which half of the capability of uh, space activities in France are concentrated. Lazio is the region in which uh, most of the capabilities of Italian capabilities in space are also concentrated, which is uh, then uh, a good occasion uh, since we have uh, this uh, Toulouse space show at the level of region to have both the region of Lazio and the region of uh, Toulouse, because the two regions are the two key points of the two countries in space. So we are quite happy then uh, Mrs. Polverini could uh, accept the invitation to come here and discuss uh, with all of us uh, about space. Times are hard for everybody in today's uh, global economic climate. Uh, is enough being done to promote research and development in the space sector in Italy, do you think? Oh, I think no, because I should say always no, whichever quantity of money we get, because uh, we need more, we need uh, huge more money. In effect, the, uh, the challenges that we are facing in terms of space are so vast, so huge, so important, uh, that uh, uh, staying in space, I cannot deny that we need a lot of money more. But staying in Italy and staying in Europe, uh, I completely understand the crisis period. I completely understand that this is not the period to dream about the explosion of expenditure in space. Nevertheless, uh, my small dream still exists and I will work for it. Uh, what are ASI's plans for the immediate future and uh, is there any movement on manned flights? I don't think so. I think that the main flights at the moment is uh, in the good pace. We are in the International Space Station. We will remain over there. We will remain uh, for almost 10 years more, at least till 2020. And we promised to American friends to stay there till 2020. And there is the occasion to work uh, for uh, main exploration in LEO. Maybe in the future we can have a different vision, but we still need to wait for the new messages from the United States, who are the leader in this field. At the moment, the situation is quite stable. Okay. China recently launched the first female astronaut from their country. Are there any plans for an Italian female astronaut to fly sometime in the future? Of course, yes. I mean, uh, female uh, astronauts are, uh, uh, let's say, an attractive uh, way to pose uh, the exploration. So we, uh, we say always uh, men exploration, but men uh, includes uh, female. And we will have uh, our astronaut, Samantha Cristoforetti, flying in the future, in a very close future. Okay, that's very interesting. How is ASI positioning itself for the training and deployment of, uh, of young astronauts or people that want to become astronauts? Well, it is uh, now it's uh, quite difficult to answer this question. We accepted that to have a single astronaut corp in Europe, and this is the one that we have in ESA. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the occasion to fly are reducing unless uh, this uh, SpaceX uh, exercise will become a reality 
in which the cost of an astronaut to the space station could be decreased from 60 million dollars down to around 20 million. And then there is a possibility to fly more astronauts. But the cost of today, we can only fly a few of them, very few of them. And this means that we cannot have astronauts staying for one flight and then waiting 10, 15 years for the successive flight. So we should understand that the flight is an event which can be isolated, a single event during the lifetime of a single astronaut. So we should learn how to use an astronaut when he's not flying or after the first flight. Okay. Mr. Sagese, if you could imagine one leap forward in the next year for ASI, uh, what would that be? Okay, we are dreaming about uh, the possibility to use uh, Vega for uh, two different fields. One field is uh, the possibility to use it uh, for geostationary satellite uh, by using uh, the capability of uh, uh, electrical propulsion on the satellite. Uh, so if we can uh, arrive to the Li orbit with the chemicals and then continue with the uh, uh, electrical propulsion, this could lead uh, satellites of the class of 2-3 ton to geostationary orbit. Uh, this means that uh, this, uh, this um, uh, spacecraft will fly for one year until arriving to GEO, but still could be a chance uh, to use Vega for this purpose. The second purpose for Vega is the one of uh, hospiting an unmanned space vehicle which could fly at uh, roughly 3,500 kilometers and then uh, uh, ground on its own wheels, so make a, a landing, a soft landing on ground, then hospiting uh, uh, scientific payloads or even uh, a reconnaissance uh, uh, payloads with the possibility then to recover them completely. So these two tasks would complete the, com the usage of Vega with uh, scopes. So it's just, just a launch, but it's a part of a larger uh, ambitious uh, uh, program. Mr. Sergesi, thank you very much. As always, when you answer our questions, it's very interesting. Thank you very much for your attention. Bye.